people, you're going to give value, pop up in our life, but you can do it through text, which is totally cool. Um, quick, easy interactions. The third purpose is sexual escalation, which takes the ability to be intimate with women and the ability to understand not only your own emotions, but her emotions as well. The concept of emotional intelligence, understanding your emotions, being able to control them, and understanding and controlling her emotions, not controlling in a nefarious way, but this is stuff that, that James and the TNL guys are like really crazy good at. And that's why I, I really like coming to like, whenever James is like, oh, you wanna come talk, you know, we'll have Liam up from our, you know, our company, he'll talk for a little while, I'm like, yes. Because guys like us, professional PUAs, don't really get to, watch other guys like I want to take a fucking boot camp with James but it's like well you know I hear a company in my company but then I can come to a seminar and be like hmm what Liam said yes and mix it all into my game <laughs> um, yeah. uh, the natural life life planning is my new company now here's the most important thing uh, life planning that's terrible uh, the most important thing about phone and text is that you must always be working towards one of the above purposes of your conversation. The whole thing will miss the point. We talk about intention. Our intentions are extremely clear to women. Women are um, at least two times better at interpreting nonverbal communication than men are. Women can smell our intentions a mile away. That's why, you know, like... <laughs> Professional pickup artists can walk up to a girl and be like, hi, how you going? Guys that are really good at it can walk up and say, oh, how's it going? But when you first get into it, hi, how are you, how are you doing or how are you going? It's like the worst opener ever because you're like, no, I don't want to And then she's going to be like, oh, he came up with the worst line ever. But it's not the worst line. You just said it in a really weird way. The same thing happens over phone and text. Sometimes... When you put together a series of text routines, there's a lot of things, on, I know some boards in, in the United States have like, oh, cool text routines. They'll be like, oh, three word opera. You start this story and each of you sends a text that has three words and you continue the story. That's really cool. But when guys say, oh, this is a cool routine, I'm gonna try it out, it comes off as incongruent because you're not working towards something. You're not escalating, you're not pursuing it. And just like Liam was talking about your intentions, are not to seduce the woman. Your intentions are like, try out a fucking cool text thing that I read about that's gonna get me laid, you know? And invariably it doesn't help because you're just trying to do that text thing. And you do that text thing and the woman's going, you know, walking through Starbucks or walking through the grocery store or sitting at home in bed waiting for you to fucking, you know, start sexually escalating with her and going, why the fuck are we doing this three word opera shit? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, uh, we talk about the conversa the act of um, sexual escalation within text and within phones as moving through a series of steps and then including escalation in that. So how do we define what escalation is? Um, th the best thing to do as far as verbal escalation goes is to describe how it's not. Now, I always say a conversation without escalation is like going to a Christmas party, right? Let's say we go to a Christmas party, you're there because you know the host, and I'm there because I know the host, but we don't know each other. So I'm walking over, and it's like James's Christmas party, right? And it's, oh, hey, James, you know, how's it going? What's going on, man? Oh, we're so happy to be here. Thanks for having me at your Christmas party. And then, you know, Bob, the whoever, comes over, and it's like, oh, yeah, thanks for having me at your Christmas party. And James goes, cool, guys. Hey, by the way, Bob, this is Gareth. Gareth, this is Bob. I got to go check on the pigs in a blanket or the beer or whatever. I'll get out of here. And we're kind of, like, left standing with each other. And you have that conversation that's like, we both came here to talk to James. Now we're talking to each other. Um, so, how do you know James? Oh, I know him because he's a teacher. Oh, that's cool. How do you know James? Oh, he's friends with me in Hollywood. Oh, that's cool. So, do you live around here? No, I live in LA. Oh, where do you live? Oh, I live in Melbourne. Oh, that's cool. How long have you lived there? Oh, two years. How long have you lived in LA? You know, like the worst, most boring conversation. Because there is no escalation through, um, not just sexual escalation, but escalation through a particular system. You're not working towards anything. So let's talk about the three myths of texting. Okay, I, I want to talk about texting specifically right now because it's not a lot, there's not a lot of information about it. Um, we were talking earlier about you know, a lot of the information that you get from the stuff that you hear about. The first main myth is that you cannot seduce over text. It's just text. One of the grandfathers of the seduction community says, oh, why would you text a girl when you can, you know, when you can talk to her? Because that's such a waste. I can seduce a woman in 10 minutes and make her dripping and ready for me, but you know, you're just over there texting and you can't get out as many words as I can in 10 minutes. Okay, we'll check it out. If that girl is in class for two hours and she's sitting in the back, 
I can text her that whole time. Because, you know, she's like, you know, oh, yeah, totally. I'm totally listening to this lecture. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah, whatever. Texting, 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 texting. And I can escalate from that point. And easily in two hours, I can get to the point where she can think of nothing but me. We've set up her coming over. I'm telling her about all the things I'm going to do to her when she gets here. I'm like, bring a bottle of wine. It'll be great. We'll light some candles. It'll be incredible. I'll like send you on this romantic, spiritual, sexual journey where you'll just unleash your primitive self in her fucking like history of art class. And she's like, oh, she's getting all wound up. And she steps out of class and like the grandfather, you know, whatever PUA dude says you can't text a girl, calls her because he knows she gets out of class at 5 p.m. He calls her at 5.01 and he's like, hey, how you how you doing and all she can think about is 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 coming over and just like releasing all of that tension and just having all of these wonderful experiences we've described he can take 10 minutes but it's going to take a lot more time to just to get that out of her head and to change that feeling so the idea isn't necessarily about like getting ahead of the game early bird gets the worm but knowing that it is possible in a lot of situations texting is essentially talking it's really, really important to understand that the written word affects the mind in a similar way to the spoken word. Okay, so we'll talk about the school bully. Um, I want you guys to think about this question. We're talking about the written, like, it, just any words having emotional value. That's how often, um, or that's the purpose of words, that they have a, an emotional value to us, whether it be the word lemon or a particular name. And the best example I can give is like, how many of you guys had like a bully or just a fucking dick in like high school that was like the shittiest dude ever anybody yeah like fucking everybody right now i want you to think of his name okay what's what's your name or his his He's name Karsten. Karsten. Kar yeah. Kar wow cool yeah. yeah new australian names they're always like bob or ken or something like that um so you're laying there in 10 years right laying with your your beautiful bride to be or bride or whatever and she's ripe with your child and you're stroking her stomach and you're both trying to decide on names right and you're like what should we name our little boy and she's like what about karsten and you're like fuck that name right <laughs> everyone feels that way it's because, it's probably a perfectly good name it's very interesting it's wonderful i could probably have a kid named karsten karsten jones he'd be an actor um, <laughs> But you're like, fuck no, right? Because that has an emotional value with it. So when we use our words, whether they be spoken, like Liam was talking about, or whether they be written, they still have that emotional value. Um, emotional escalation, it will lead directly to emotional escalation, and then of course, sexual escalation and sexual seduction. Sensual seduction. Um, just like talking, all phone and text interactions should be geared towards the meetup. This is just like we were talking about. Um, don't ever practice seduction, seduce. I, I very sincerely believe that. Whether it be a date or a fuck, just keep that in mind. Escalation is going to be key. Um, you need escalation. Um, we'll talk about why that's a really important. Um, as, far as, conf as far as any kind of seduction goes, um, whether it be just purely sexual, playful, fun, or whether it be because you purely just want this one girl and you want, it, you want her in your life as much as possible, you have to understand that there's three most important parts of this stuff. is confidence, dominance, and persistence. This is essentially, I always say, do not stop trying to get what you deserve. And this is a lot of what Lean was talking about too, just having that intention and knowing that that's what you want. And there's a lot of women out there that want that as well. So don't be afraid to pursue that. You know, in most cases, women will be like, listen, I don't want this. You know, they'll show up and be like, this is bad. And you go, oh, fuck, okay. Two steps back, one step forward. Um, the second myth is that you shouldn't text too often. Now, how many of you guys have read like any kind of like text information or text like um, uh, like text programs or something like that, like any kind of, of that stuff, right? Um, a lot of the big ones, especially on like layers in the United States, is that, oh, what, what you should do is you should like wait so you don't appear like needy with the girl, right? Because then if you text back too quick, like she'll think you're waiting for her text, right? Well, that's asinine basically. Like, that principle would apply to talking to a girl in person. Well, when she asks you a question, wait. Because if you answer too quickly, you're really needy and you want, yeah, this is, this is stupid as shit. Um, 